السلام عليكم <تصفيق> بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله <تصفيق> The topic today is on body image and I think the best place for us to start in discussing this uh, is asking ourselves what really drives us. What are we trying to get done here? Because um, I think the issue of body image, which uh, broadly speaking is, is on how people view themselves and their own beauty. Is, is one that we have to unpack a little bit, the one that we have to go a few layers deeper and really ask, where are we getting our definitions of success? And I think it's a broader issue, it's a broader conversation than just how we view our physical beauty. If we think how we're defining our success in life. What does that look like? You know, I was just at, uh, I was just invited to my 20 year high school reunion this summer. So you can do the math and figure out how old I am. And I didn't, unfortunately I wasn't able to go, but I was thinking about what it feels like to go to, to a 20 year high school reunion. And what they essentially are, are you know, you, you get together with your old classmates and you compare who is most accomplished, most successful. And if you think with me what success, how does success is defined at a high school reunion? <clears throat> it's who has the coolest job, who has the most money, who's driving the best car, who looks the best, right? There's all these diet programs <clears throat> that'll tell you lose, you know, 20 pounds in a week for your high school reunion. It's, it's this whole like industry. If you have a family whose kids are the most successful, you know, especially in our community, we, we compare children. But if you, take a step back and think about how we're supposed to think about success, it bears absolutely no resemblance to any of this criteria. And it also helps us understand how we should view this idea of beauty and body image. I've really been thinking a lot and, um, and writing a little bit on the simple concept of how the Qur'an defines success. And one simple, you know, very succinct ayah that I've really been reflecting on <clears throat> is this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qad aflaha man zakkaha. It, it simply says, successful are those who purify it, referring to the nafs, referring to the soul, to the heart. If that becomes our criteria for success, if that truly, in, in everything we think about and in everything we do, truly becomes our, our criteria for success, we would see things completely differently. If your experience in high school or in college <clears throat> was one where you weren't the most popular person, if your experience in, in your adolescence as you were growing up was one where there were a lot of struggles, where you dealt with bullying or you dealt with being ostracized, um, where you weren't the one that fit in, where you weren't the one who had people lined up um, dying to ask you out. Were you successful or unsuccessful? The answer is, it depends on how you responded to that. If that kind of an experience drove you to dig deeper into yourself, turn back to Allah, 
and ask more profound questions at that age than other than your peers. And as a result, purified your heart, then you are very successful. If your experience of life is one where everyone praised you, you were the perfect child, the most uh, beautiful girl or best looking guy in school, and everything was perfect and easy for you, and that resulted in a superficial understanding of life, then you were a horrible failure. But to define success, to reframe success for ourselves, is something we have to start with. Because once we do that, the issue of beauty and body image becomes much easier to talk about. Why are we talking about body image? Well, because there is a very defined and well-known standard of beauty that we all are exposed to, that we all are dealing with. And at your age, looking at this awesome audience, most of you, you're probably thinking about marriage. Anyone here had that thought maybe run into their mind once or twice last year, perhaps, a few times? Okay, one honest person in the audience, alhamdulillah. And within that conversation um, about uh, finding a spouse, which I guess there's going to be an entire session on tonight. That issue of body image becomes really important. People are equating perhaps their entire life's happiness with what they look like right now. And they're really worried about it, especially women. But if we reframe that entire paradigm, if we reframe that entire way of looking at things to a Quranic view of the world, our mind would shift to different worries. We would ask ourselves different questions. It wouldn't be how do I look today, but what do I look like on the inside? And this sounds so cliche. I think I feel like when I, I feel like I'm saying these things and they sound like incredibly theoretical. But but I'm actually talking from personal experience. I'm talking from uh, real life observations and personal experience. This isn't just um, you know an Isna lecture template that we're all reading from. This is real, this is real, this is real life. Your success in life is based on the purification that you undergo of your heart in your life. It's not based on who you end up marrying, who your kids are, what they look like, how much money you're making. If you have the big five room house in the suburbs or the awesome car. Even if your life ends up that picture-perfect high school reunion um, poster child that everybody's jealous of, and that lifestyle ends up lulling you into apathy, then you haven't been successful. If your life is full of struggles, one hardship after another, one disappointment after another, and that drives you to rethink your priorities and dig deep into your heart to purify and turn back to Allah, then you've had an awesome, successful life. If we talk specifically about body image, I want to tell you a couple things that you should just keep in mind. What you see in magazines is fiction. It's literally fiction. You can go online and actually see videos of what they do to pictures 
of models. Now, these are models. These are people who get paid to look perfect. But they're never perfect enough. They take pictures of women who are already way thinner than their healthy weight should be, and then take off another three to four inches from their waist. Increase the, the length of their neck. Increase how long their legs are. And that's what you're seeing. So what you're seeing is a deformed human being, not a beautiful woman. But when we're, when we're so exposed to these pictures, we start to think that that's how we're supposed to look. And it's no wonder that most people have problems with their body image. So that's the first thing you should keep in mind, is what you're seeing is actually fiction. And I'd say that to both men and women. We need to completely change our expectations of what real beauty is. The second thing you should keep in mind is it is so fragile and temporary. From personal experience and from research, that beauty that you might be marrying is going to, you're going to be indifferent to it in like a week. If you're going to marry someone because of the way they look, it will not matter to you a week later. Beauty, this idea of beauty is skin deep, it's literally true. It will not matter. The things that really endure in any kind of book on relationships is how well people understand each other. And anyone with, with real wisdom who really wants <clears throat> a relationship that's going to work long term, looking for the way someone looks as, you know, anything more than one of 20 different um, criteria will end up in, in a lot of disappointment because it just doesn't last. It's not that beauty doesn't last, that person could look that way forever, but the, the, um, the, the importance of that you will not last. You, you will simply not notice it after a while. And it's very easy to, and I'll give you just very concrete proof of that if, if it doesn't seem like it's true. I'm always blown away by the beautiful women in Hollywood whose husbands cheat on them. It's like every single one. It, it's like you're married to her, and that's sort of like not enough for you. It's, I'm, I'm always astounded by it, but this is why. It's, it's completely a, a temporary um, point of interest. Without that deeper bond, it just doesn't matter. So I only have a minute left, and I want to end with this emphasis on redefining what it means to be successful, both in our lives and in our relationships. Thank you.